Tonight on CTV, see how last year's record-breaking fundraising campaign will affect CSU students. And everything you need to know about the upcoming football season and how students feel about being back on campus. All that and more on CTV starting now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Ren Wadsworth. And I'm Robbie Patla. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight for the first new show of the semester. Coronavirus took a financial toll on people and businesses around the world. However, despite this, Colorado State University saw one of its strongest years in fundraising in history. Donors were interested in helping and contributing to programs for students in need, such as Rams Against Hunger and Rams Aid. CSU saw its most successful giving Tuesday to date, raising over $1,500,000. And in addition to individual donations, Rams Against Hunger was the beneficiary of an anonymous $1 million gift. However, this wasn't the only large contribution. A $2 million grant was given to the school to prevent future pandemics, and a $6 million donation was given to the James L. Voss Veterinary Teaching Hospital. In addition to various other contributions from nearly 30,000 people, CSU saw its best fundraising year ever, all during a global pandemic. Fort Collins police have arrested a teenager related to the homicide of 58-year-old Todd Stout that occurred on July 5th. Stout was found dead under a bridge west of Mason Street with multiple stabbing-related injuries. Police announced that 16-year-old Benjamin Zwallen was arrested at his South Fort Collins home and is being charged as an adult with first-degree murder. Zwallen is being held at a juvenile detention facility and is scheduled to appear in court on September 6th. The iconic Colorado State University A recently got a fresh coat of paint after a year where it went untouched by CSU students' hands. Students from Colorado State University make the drive up to Horsetooth Reservoir to be a part of a tradition that has existed nearly as long as the school itself. CSU's Alumni Association hosts the yearly repainting and invites both students and alumni to paint part of the historic A. Uh, every year we seem to be setting new land speed records for uh, getting the A painted. And it looks as sharp and bright as it ever has, so our volunteers have done a great job once again. and. Uh, I'm just so proud to be a part of that and to the extent that that right. makes this happen. In the past, stones were painted by hand, but due to overgrowth, electric spray paint is used to coat rocks and shrubbery inside the outline. To some, these are more than just painted rocks. They represent normalcy and tradition coming back to Colorado State University. Working in teams, rams cover the ground with water-based paint meant to protect existing vegetation. While painting rocks may seem easy at first, the 450 feet span of land the letter takes up makes the job larger than life. After hours of work, those involved get a good look at what they've accomplished on the ride back down the mountain. The painting of the A is just one of the things Colorado State University students are encouraged to participate in before graduating. The full list is available for viewing on the Alumni Association's website. Vice President for Operations and Chief Financial Officer Lynn Johnson has announced that she will be leaving CSU this year. Johnson is responsible for overseeing such operations including facilities management, business and financial services, the Office of Budgets, Human Resources and Safety and Risk Services. According to source CSU, President Joyce McConnell acknowledged Johnson's success by saying she performed her job with such grace and skill that she makes it look easy. Johnson expressed her excitement for the future by saying, quote, I'm ready to take, back, to take a step back and I'm excited about my next season of adventure, but definitely not looking forward to saying goodbye to the CSU community, end quote. Johnson's last day will be between March 1st and June 3rd, 2022. From all of us at CTV, we wish Johnson the best. Don't go anywhere, Rams, because we'll be right back with Michelle Ellis' weather report. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Until September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help feed my little sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry.
Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Michelle Ellis, and this is the weather. So, for Collins, let's take a look at what, what the weather is right now. As we can see, it's about 88 degrees, and that's expected to cool down as the night goes on. And it's mostly clear with a few clouds, and the sunset is setting soon, 733. And if you're looking for the moon, that moonrise will be at midnight. As students have come back to campus, the hot weather isn't the only thing that they have noticed. They have been seeing that there is a change in the weather. They can't even see the A anymore. Due to the wildfires covering the northern region of Colorado, the A is barely visible. But that isn't the only thing that we are seeing. The National Weather Service has issued a warning that if you can bike, to bike to reduce extra emissions. Now let's take a look at what the high and lows are for tomorrow. As we can see that the high is almost 90, about 89 degrees, and a low with 60. Now the weather will be mostly cloudy and it's expected to get a little raining in the evening with a 22% chance of rain during the day. So let's see what the rest of Colorado is looking like today. So along the northern region we can see it's 89 in Fort Collins, 96 in Sterling, 70 in Craig, as long as as well, excuse me, as we go down the I-25 we can see it's about 85, high 90s and even Pueblo hitting 95 degrees. When we go over to the mountain side we see that it gets close, colder to 70 degrees and in Telluride 58 degrees. Let's take a look at the lows. As we can see, Fort Collins, we're at 63, Craig 50, Sterling 61. As we go down I-25, we can see it's around low 60s. And then Telluride even hitting a low 49 degrees, as well as Gunnison with a 47 degrees. The National Weather Service has issued a flash flood warning for both Vail and Telluride, so be aware of that if you're in those areas. Now back to Fort Collins, let's take a look at what the five day forecast is. For Thursday, we're seeing it's gonna be a high of 83 with a low of 57. And we're gonna see it's mostly sunny and it's some rain and we can be expected to see some thunderstorms and some drizzle during the day. So Friday is kind of similar with an 85 degrees, 55, mostly sunny with some clouds. Now Saturday, we can see it's also 84 degrees with a low of 55, with, but it'll be sunny skies. Now let's take a look at what the weekend and Monday is gonna look like. Sunday is gonna be with a 93 with a low of 56, but it'll be sunny with a few clouds out. And that's all I have for you guys today. Stay tuned to see what else is next. Oh. Welcome back from the break, Rams. Mice may be household pests to some people, but to the Poudre River Conservation Team, the endangered Preble Meadow Jumping Mouse is a treasure to protect at all costs. The team is staffed by several CSU conservation experts and is working closely with local landowners and public agencies to rebuild miles of habitat and find a location for the recovery population. George Seidel, a team member and distinguished CSU professor, said that the Preble Mouse is an important indicator in a healthy riverside ecosystem. Mobile home users may need to keep an eye out for orange tags next week due to a new fee-paying solution. The Larimer County Treasurer and Public Trustee's Office is implementing a tags as a courtesy reminder for mobile homes with property taxes that are overdue. They serve as a reminder to pay the outstanding taxes before more fees incur. Payments for mobile home taxes can be made through the mail through the Larimer County Treasurer. The City of Fort Collins is providing $25 away trees to 350 residents. These trees will be coming from Arbor Day Foundation's Community Canopy Program to help the environment through strategic planting. The City says that community forests are a more effective method of maintaining water quality during storms than traditional flood control systems. On the morning of Tuesday, September 7th, residents can reserve one of the 350 trees at fcgov.com slash tree canopy. Early in the semester, students can usually expect a fall address from the university's active president. 
However, this year, Colorado State University decided to take another route. Instead of the traditional fall address, students are invited to what is called a fall reflection. The event is meant to reflect on the last year as well as act as a healing opportunity for students and staff at CSU. The change from the traditional address came after requests from the CSU community to acknowledge the challenges from the previous year. The fall reflection will begin in the morning at 11 on September 1st. Instead of taking place on the oval where the fall address typically takes place, the reflection will be held on the Lori Student Center's West Lawn. Lunch will be provided for all in attendance. Week 2 of classes is already here, and now that Rams have hopefully adjusted to their new schedules and discovered new study strategies, I took to the crowded streets of campus to ask students how they are adjusting to the year. After a year consumed by COVID-19, students of Colorado State University are able to return to a more traditional college experience. It feels great. It feels amazing. I love seeing everybody and all their faces and meeting new friends. It's great. After a successful start, some students hope to keep this momentum. I'm just thankful for the fact that we're here in person. Um, I, I really hope we don't have to go back onto the computers. Every day, students fill the plaza, occupy the IM fields, and even let their creative juices flow. All these activities help build a sense of community, which is something most students crave. If I were to hope anything, I would hope that people come together as a result of last year. You can finally interact with the teachers. You're not staring at a screen the whole time, so your focus is mainly on the teacher instead of like other stuff like your phone. It can be easy to get lost in all the socializing and study grinding. To combat this, students have a few pieces of advice for their peers to help them stay on top of things. Treat everyone how you like, how you'd want to be treated. You know, like I don't know. We're all we're all human, and we all we all have the same needs and whatnot. Don't procrastinate, cause that's like. One of the major things that our generation is known for. If you got time to do your work, just do it right then and there and you'll be done. Really just put yourself out there. You're not going to get anywhere or do anything without really just taking the guts to step out of your comfort zone and meet people. Locking yourself in your dorm room isn't going to do anything except for just worse than where you're already at. Even though it is sometimes hard to navigate through the large groups of people, it is nice to see students embracing their school spirit. We will be having a lot more of school spirit on Friday for the first in-person football game in almost two years. With more on Canvas Stadium, we have Natalie Devereaux live in the studio to tell us all about this upcoming Friday. Natalie? Thanks, Robbie. When reminiscing on college days, many think back to time spent at football stadiums chanting fight songs surrounded by friends. However, after Canvas Stadium closed last March, CSU students were left wondering if they would ever re-enter the green and gold clad arena. Canvas Stadium opened in 2017. It was the first time in 50 years football would be housed on campus, bringing back a sense of community for the Rams. Spectre Food Services have been working for the college's football stadiums for years, including when Canvas was built three years ago, but the stadium staff were all let go at the start of the pandemic. I spoke to Spectre's senior vice president, Jay Satinspiel, about how difficult it was to lose close to 90% of his employees. You know, I've been doing this a long, long time, and if you ever had told me that we would never have sports and then fans, I would have looked at you and said, you're crazy. The supply chain that all food services lean on has been greatly disrupted, making it extremely hard to get food delivered. Phyllida Bill is the executive chef for Spectra and has experienced these problems firsthand. We have seen a lot of the things that we just use normally that there's no problem getting all of a sudden somebody's behind. Although such drastic food shortages are new, labor scarcity within hospitality is not. Working long hours for minimum wage does not appeal to many people and is making it hard to build back a full team. But for those employees who are present, they are doing their best to reunite the community. Well, the goal is to safely welcome our guests back, mm -hmm. is to be able to put on a great culinary experience and be part of an amazing game day experience. Even with the odds stacked against them, employees at Spectre are determined to make a fourth quarter comeback and get the touchdown. The first football game of the season will be this Friday against South Dakota State. Canvas Stadium is bracing themselves for the influx of students, alumni, and guests that they will be receiving. As of now, though, they are confident they will be able to meet the needs of everyone who attends. Students and employees have been working tirelessly to make it so. Back to you, Robbie. 
Thanks, Natalie. After only two weeks, the Poudre School District has already reported 120 coronavirus cases. The two grades hit with the most cases are kindergartners and high school seniors. The Poudre School District is still uncertain about how to handle COVID testing and identifying asymptomatic students and staff. The district also does not have universal masking in place. That's all the news we have for you tonight, Rams. But don't go anywhere because Brandon Cruz will give you the total rundown on this upcoming football season.